Democratic governor in this state, Elkinsville, will grow from a handful of farms to a fair-sized village. And son, as true as my name is Silas Jeremiah Elkins, it's bound to grow eastward. Keep that east side land in the family. And don't sell. Years that Elkinsville's been growing westward. But that's only temporary. With a new Republican governor, it'll shoot up from a village to a town. And son, as true as my name is Oscar Abner Elkins, it'll all be the east. Someday your grandfather's hundred acres will be worth a fortune. Promise me that you'll never sell. Yes, sir, Reed. With a Democratic governor and a Republican legislature, anything can happen. Just as true as my name is Henry Elkins, Elkinsville will grow from a town to a city. As my only child and heir, you've got a great responsibility. Yes, Pop. Now, Elkinsville is bound to expand eastward, and our land will make us Elkinses millionaires. Look, Pop, that's all I've heard ever since I was born. East, east, east. And all the time Elkinsville's been moving west, west, west. Mm, can't go much farther west. What? Darn near in Perry's Junction now. Mm -hmm. And our land is darn near in the wilderness. I've got everything all worked out, Janie. Landscaping, streets, architect, plans. Elkins, Eastern Acres. The poor man's paradise. Now it's a new slogan. What happened to the old one? You're, uh, you're heaven bound with a plot of our ground. Mm, it's no good. Sounded like we were running a graveyard. Henry! Uh-oh, your mother. Listen, you, you better not let her hear you talking about that the poor man's paradise. Oh, yeah. Is it? Henry, what are you going to do about that drip in the bathroom? Is your brother Alvin in there again? I mean the wash bowl. Oh. Now, you know my club's meeting here today, and the women might... How many... What have you got there? Uh, nothing. <laughs> It was sort of dusty, and I was just wiping it off. He's been talking about that property again. I was not, was I? Oh, Henry, I told you a year ago, when you when you turned down that offer, that I never wanted that property mentioned again. I couldn't let it go for a golf course, not after promising Pa and he promising Grandpa. If you'd taken that money, we'd had a nice home by now over on the west side. West side? With the Wingates and the Elmores and the Martins. And a new car. You keep out of this. Wait till you're married, and you'll have arguments of your own. Henry, get that faucet fixed, will you? I've got to give Molly a hand in the kitchen. She's threatening to quit again. She's been threatening to quit for the last 18 years. And this quit. time, I mean it. I'm leaving. All right, Molly, I knew you wouldn't stay when you came. I've got enough to do to take care of this full family without worrying about a full cat. Molly, you just hate cats. Now, don't get yourself all riled up. You know it gives you the hiccups. Molly, you better get those sandwiches started in the kitchen, Mrs. Elkins. A body's only got two arms. And if somebody doesn't give me a hand around here pretty soon, there ain't going to be no seancy today. Ah, now you see what you've done, Mr. Elkins. Ah. There ain't going to be no what? A seancy. One of them things where everybody sits around holding hands and talking to the spirits. Ah, it's nothing. It's just my club meeting here today. Sir. Oh, wait a minute. Ah. What's going on in my own home that I should know about but don't know about because nobody will tell me? It's Mom's club. They've gone gaga over some silly swami. Some what? Swami, a Hindu mystic. I wish you could see that oily-looking faker. Oh, Jenny, he isn't a faker. And he isn't oily-looking. As a matter of fact, he's very handsome. Oh, Mom, you've got the worst taste in men. Young lady, I take that as a personal insult. <laughs> That's what that bird said when I first came to work for this crazy family. But I wouldn't take the hint. Two o'clock already. Henry, now you'll have to give us a hand in the kitchen. Oh, ask Janie. 
Oh, I can't. Danny and I are going to the movies. First, you'll have to put a leaf in the dining room table. What's wrong with Al? Alvin's busy. If he's busy, he's busy sleeping. Hey! Hey! How do you expect a guy to get any shut-eye around here? What did I tell you? Poor Alvin. Only got 16 hours last night. A guy in my business needs lots of sleep. You gotta have a clear brain to sell insurance. You gotta have a brain, period. Henry. A delayed delinquent. I resent that. Well, you haven't sold a policy yet, have you? Well, it takes time to soften up the prospects. The time it's taking you, they must be softened to a pulp. I don't see you selling any real estate. I don't have to. Just wait until the bank lends me that $60,000 to develop Elkins Eastern Acres. <laughs> If Mr. Hunter lets you have 60,000 cents, he's crazier than you are. Besides, you could have unloaded that, that, that gopher's gulch three years ago. For an amusement park. If I wanted a roller coaster or a tunnel of love on my property, I don't need a big mouth nincompoop like you to tell me. Stop, Uncle Alvin. Danny Wingate's coming any minute. If he walks in on a family squabble, I'll die. Just die. Henry, Alvin's not a big mouth nincompoop. No, then what kind is he? Oh, now wait. You want me to move? No, he doesn't. No, what she said I said. Oh, no, he's not going to move. Laura, go ahead and move. Get out of here. Oh, oh. Don't pay any attention to me, but the doorbell is ringing. A relaxed spine. Look, Alvin, old man, if it's not too much of a strain, could you take hold of one end of this table? Never mind. I'll do it. Thanks. Here. Hello, Danny. Well, how's all your folks? Fine, I guess. Mom's getting ready for your party, and Dad sold three more lots on the west side this morning. Oh, nice. Glad well, somebody in town selling some real estate. Alvin, could you close this table in your mouth at the same time? Now, Henry, please. Look, Mr. Alvins, my dad says you could be a big man in the real estate business, too. You weren't so dumb. I mean, stubborn. He says you should have sold your land last year, and they wanted it for a cemetery. Cemetery? You didn't tell us anything about a cemetery. Nobody gets buried on my land unless I say so. And I know just who I'd like to start with. Ah, uh, you're nutty as a fruitcake. Don't you worry, Mr. Twilliger. One of these days, I'm going to give you a little surprise. Mr. Elkins, I'm going to give you a little surprise. The phone's been ringing for the last five minutes. It's Mr. Hunter. Well, tell him to call back. Hunter. The bank. The bank. Hello? Hello, Henry. Are you in the mood to discuss Elkins Eastern Acres? Am I? I mean, I am, Mr. Hunter. Well, great, Mr. Hunter. Yes, Mr. Hunter, I'll be right down, Mr. Hunter. Mr. Hunter. So, I can't sell real estate, huh? I'm as nutty as a raisin cake, huh? Fruit cake. Well, you might be interested to know that Mr. Hunter wants to close a deal on Elkins Eastern Acres. Oh, maybe I better go along. You just hand me my hat. Sure, Henry. All right. I don't want to get this map down here. I, so, uh, I won't take it after all. I won't need it. Get, get me the car key. Oh, Henry, I need the car key. But then I guess this is more important. Yes, yeah, gee, Mrs. Hawkins, you don't have to bother. I'll drive him down. You? Why, sure, that's the surprise. I've got a new car. A new oh. car? Oh, Dan. Shall we go, Mr. Hawkins? You bet. Nora, when I come back, I'll lay a fortune at your feet. <laughs> Look, are you sure you don't want me to go along? I'm positive. Oh, Henry. Henry! Danny, I'm so excited. When did you get it? This morning, Janie. 
Oh, Danny, it's beautiful. Some job, huh? This is it? Yup, ain't she a beauty? Of course, she needs a little polish. Polish? Now look, kids, I, I think I'll walk. You don't have to, Mr. Alkins. I'll get you there in no time. You mean this thing actually runs? Why, she'll do 110. I got special gears, a full race cam, and high compression heads. Well, I need the exercise, and it's only four blocks. Oh, Pop, don't act like a square funny daddy. Come on. Oh, now wait. Oh, shit. Kids, I, I've changed my mind. I'm going to walk after all. Well, <laughs> ten seconds flat, and I didn't even get her into high gear. You won't get me into that egg beater again for a hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> Well, well, Henry Elgin. How's the Wingate Real Estate Company these days? Well, we managed to get by. How's your business? Wonderful. Great. Terrific. Well, now, don't you worry. It's bound to pick up soon. <laughs> 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 uh, you got a new brainstorm, or are you still working Elkins Eastern Acres? You'll find out soon enough. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I wasn't expecting you for another ten minutes, Henry. You must have been jet propelled. Yeah, I think I was. Mr. Hunter, I want to congratulate you. Thanks. What have I been up to now? You're the only man in town with vision and foresight. Oh, I wouldn't say that. Well, I would and I will. You're the only man smart enough to see the tremendous possibilities of my land. No wonder you're the president of the biggest bank in town. Well, I, uh, I try to keep on my toes. Oh, yeah, thanks. You know, Henry, the west side is supposed to be our fashionable residential district. But it's not all it's cracked up to be. You said it. When the wind is wrong, the smoke from the city incinerator blows all over the place. Uh, you won't have that trouble on the east side. I know. That's why we want your land. Mr. Hunter, you don't know what this means to me. It's the dream of a lifetime. It'll be a permanent monument to the Elkins family. I suppose, in a way, it could be called a monument. Look, I've got everything all figured out. Sewage, streets, lights. And, and look at this model cottage. Four exposures, north, south, east, and west. Just a minute, Henry. There seems to be some slight misunderstanding. Front and back porch. We were considering your land for the new city dump. Indirect. The, the city dump? We want to build a big new incinerator. That'd be a fine monument to the Elkins family. The council would appropriate a tidy sum, Henry. Sure. What would grandfather say? What would father say? Why, oh, uh, I'd be afraid to die. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. You haven't got the foresight of an oyster. You're just a stubborn old baker. Don't you worry. I'll get my money someplace else. I wish you luck, Henry. The old partnership's still intact. Lou, the honey child, you look slightly terrific. Well, thanks, Eddie. Oh, but it's Lila now. Yeah, Lou didn't have enough fans, and I'm no longer Roger. Now it's Swami. <laughs> Gave themselves a promotion. Meet Mr. Harding. How do you do, Lou? Mr. Harding is vice president of National Transit Airways. I've been his number one boy ever since I quit show business. Boss, this is one of the best acts I've ever played the big time. You ought to see the messy temple we've got. Well, we're the biggest thing to hit this town since the Great Glacier. Yeah, the women. Right, they're just eating it up. Mrs. Elkins here won't make a move without first himself. Say, what kind of a chap is Mr. Elkins? Why, I don't know. I've never met him. We have a business proposition for him, but he isn't in. We're coming back at 4.30. Well, I've got to be running along. Got a few sociable spooks to contact for Mrs. Elkins. Will I be seeing you, Eddie? Why, sure. So long. Lula, honey child, you ever get tired of talking to those dead ones? Give me a ring. <laughs> <laughs> He's very interesting. He certainly is. Come in. Hello. You're here at last, dear, dear Swami. My dear Mrs. Elkins, how wonderfully well. 
The ladies are all in here waiting, and they're getting pretty impatient. Oh, I hope I've arranged everything properly. I'm sure. <laughs> May I take your towel? Molly, that'll be all. Well, we thought them Hindus wore their towels somewhere else. Please. Uh, is there somebody missing? Oh, it's Tilly Frederick. She couldn't come. She's got the flu. Mm, how inconvenient. Uh, we should have uh, nine. Oh, oh couldn't, we, couldn't we possibly get by with eight? Uh, not very well, Mrs. Elkins. Uh, nine is the mystic number. There are nine inter circles and nine outer circles in the nine centers of the astral abode. We wouldn't have had this trouble if we'd had the seance at my home. I look forward to the pleasure of visiting your home next week, my dear Mrs. Wingate. Don't you worry about a thing, Swami. I'll have somebody else immediately. Oh, Molly. Molly, we're in an awful thing. But you do run out of ghosts. No, we need one more lady. Well, why don't you get this? Nora Elkins. If you mean me, no. Oh, Molly, you've just got to help me. Otherwise, they'll call the whole thing off. Well, let them. Them shenanigans ain't natural anyway. The girls will never forgive me, especially that Mabel Forster. Listen, Molly, we're going to try and talk to her newly departed husband. Well, I ain't interested in talking to no man I can't see. Well, that Nellie Wingate will never let me live it down. You see, I grabbed the Swami right from under her nose. Well, you should have left him there. Nora Elkins, I've sold and I've cooked and I've scrubbed for this man. But this is the end. I'm going to quit. I, Rama Singh, member of the Interpols, the nine outer circles, or in the name of Shiva the Destroyer, Rama the Creator, and Vishnu the Preserver, Manifest thy presence in society. Let there be the ringing of bells, the blowing of horns. Again, I call upon thee. <laughs> Once again, I call. I am seeking to contact Ulysses Foster, late husband, Mabel Foster. Can you come through to us, Ulysses? Not once you can hear me. You will not once, Ulysses. Are you happy? Oh, he isn't happy. Oh, you listen. Uh, perhaps he misunderstood. And uh, let me repeat. Ulysses, you will not once. The answer is yes. Twice. It is no. Do you miss me? Uh, hmm. Ain't no doubt how he feels about it. Uh, Ulysses being newly departed, this is all new to him. He's excited. I will try once more. What's the matter, Casanova? You want out? Hmm? Control yourself, Ulysses. Go to us. Ulysses, are you among us? Ulysses, are you among us? Give us a sign. Ulysses, give us a sign. Are you here? Here? He's here. I just found him. I found him too. It's like the touch of a feather. 
such pretty too. It doesn't feel like a feather. He's rubbing my legs. me, Nora. Ladies, go right ahead with your studio. I fear that is utterly impossible. You have completely destroyed the rhythm of the astral vibration. You have displeased Carly, the goddess with four arms. I'll apologize to her, one hand at a time. That does it. I knew I should have kept out of them oh. shenanigans. Oh, ladies, ladies, that swami. Look, there's Nora. coffee and sandwiches in the other room in the dining room. Nora, Why look, I can there? explain. I'll talk to you later. Now, please. Come on, oh, See if your crystal ball can get me out of this, you faker. Faker? I beg your pardon. Apparently, you don't believe in the rhythm of the astral vibration. You're darn right. I, anybody that believes in that apple frapple is a... Uh, is a... Uh... <laughs> Thanks. The hour is now 4.30. I see two men who come from afar. They will arrive any moment. They bring you a business proposition. I'll cut you in for 10%. You shall see. The crystal has spoken. My name is Williams. This is Mr. Harding. What do you want? We flew down especially to see you. Flew down? Flew down? Yes, we have a business proposition to offer you. Now, now, wait a minute. I don't want to do any business with any spooks. I... Did you say spooks? We were, uh, we were playing games. Uh, I'm supposed to be it, you know. Uh, did you say you had a business proposition? Why, yes, Mr. Elkins. Could we have a few minutes of your time? Oh, certainly, certainly. Then step right into my office. I, uh... Yes, I... National Transit Airways, and we're interested in your land. Uh, just uh, how interested are you? About $100,000 worth. You mean you want to put $100,000 into developing Elkins Eastern Acres? No, no. We want to buy it outright. We need it for an airport. Airport? To fly planes from? Oh, no. No, nothing doing. Well, now, if it's a question of price, maybe we could boost that to, say, $120,000. Not for $120 million. But, Mr. Elkins... You're just wasting your time, gentlemen. Mr. Elkins, that'll force us to buy the 60 acres right next to you. You mean the Rasmussen place? It's not quite as desirable as your property, but it'll suit our purpose very nicely. Well, but you can't do that. Planes flying 20 feet over my land. Nobody will want to live there. Sorry, Mr. Elkins, that's your problem. Take it over. Eddie, what was the idea of telling him we'd buy the adjoining property? You know, we couldn't possibly use it with all the power lines. He couldn't let on that he had the only suitable thing. It'll keep the price down. Yes, if we can ever get him to sell. My dear Mrs. Elkins, you won't forget. Next Tuesday at 2 for your private reading. I'll be there. <laughs> I got an idea, boss. I'll see you at the hotel. Uh, Mr. Rasmussen. Oh, hello, Walter. Henry up. Say, uh, I've been thinking, uh, I might consider buying that idle 60 acres of yours uh, at a price, uh, say, about uh, $4,000. Look, here's the set. We've offered $120,000 to Elkins for a piece of land. He won't sell. We've got to have it. Now, 
If you could get to him through his missus and make him change his mind, it'd be a couple of thousand in it for you. Well, I can't promise any results, Eddie. But for two thousand dollars, I can certainly try. Fine, fine. Get set. Just get me at the Chicago office. Bye, bye, Lou. But Walter, twenty thousand dollars for that rock pile? Are you crazy? Why, any fool knows that the east side is nothing but a, a gopher's gulch. Now, don't hang up, Walter. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll make it $17,000. Mr. Elkin, goodbye. Shut up. Not you, Walter. How much? Eighteen. All right, Mr. Rasmussen, it's a deal. I'll bring you over $1,000 for the deposit. We're going to ask for the first thing in the morning. Tell me that you're going to give Walter Rasmussen $18,000 for that 60-acre wing patch. I have to, Molly. If I don't, they'll put an airport on it, and that'll be the end of Elkins Eastern Acres. And where do you expect to get all that money? Money? Well, I've uh, got enough in the bank to cover the deposit, and... Uh, yes? I'll cash in my endowment policy. It's all paid up. $25,000. What happens to us? Hmm? Nora and Janie and Alvin. Oh, that's it. <laughs> I'll buy a $50,000 straight life insurance policy from Alvin. That'll take care of everybody. <laughs> Alvin! 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 What do you want? 50000 straight life. What race is he? Insurance! Yeah. Henry, come in. Come in away. Oh, no, no, take I me. Mean, Sir, sit down, Henry. Oh, that's enough. Wait a minute. I, uh, warm. Ah, there What's your name? Oh, uh, you can get rest now, Henry. Mm -hmm. What did you find out, Doc? You'll find out. From the insurance company. physical condition. An excellent risk. Send this report to the uh, insurance company. Uh, yes, Doctor. Oh, uh, by the way, Mr. Crandall's laboratory examination just came in. Crandall? Let me see it. Hmm. Just as I suspected. Poor fellow hasn't a chance. Aortic stenosis, pulmonary thrombosis, mitral insufficiency. <laughs> you open the medical encyclopedia to any page and he's got it. You notice his eyes, his tongue, the way he breathes. Very significant in his condition. He didn't look very bad to me. The worst type. He's liable to go just like that. Such a nice wife and daughter. Yes, too bad. The miracle will last four months. Four months. <laughs> well, that's the way it is, nurse. They come and they go. Well, Henry. You have nothing to worry about. I understand. Uh, look, isn't there anything I could take? What's that? You know, medicine or something. Medicine? In your condition? <laughs> You'll be throwing money away. Well, Henry, drop in again sometime. Why? Elkins property at our price is sell it to National Transit Airways at our price. Well, now, what proof have I got that they're actually going to buy it? Through a phone call to Mr. Harding, the vice president of Chicago, a call which you undoubtedly intended to make anyway, should it convince you that my information is correct. Uh, just where do you...
did you come in on the deal? Right down the middle on the profits. Well, now that you tip me off, why do I need you? It's my money. Why can't I swing it alone? I wouldn't advise you to try it, Mr. Wilkins. Besides, I don't believe Mr. Elkins would sell without a few of my special astral vibrations to give him the proper encouragement. You understand what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's a deal. Let's see, nine, one, minus two. How much is eight times three? Twenty-four. Okay. Well, what do you know? My first commission on your insurance policy is 240 bucks. That's fine. I hope you get it. Alvin, you've been figuring that all day. I wish we would discuss business at the dinner table. No, oh, no, Nora, if it makes the boy happy, remember, this is Alvin's home as well as ours. What did you say? Henry, mm -hmm. something's wrong. You've been acting very funny all day. First you buy that policy from Alvin, and you bring home candy and flowers, and now you... It's just the beginning. When a man reaches my time in life, he's got to start thinking of his loved ones. Nora... How would you like a nice new home on the, the west side? Henry, you are sick. Yes, I'm sick of living the way we've been living. Janie, honey, how would you like a brand new car? And I don't mean one of those warm rods. Pops, you don't mean it. Yes, I do. You're certainly in a buying mood. That's not all he's buying, 18. I'm not forgetting you, Molly, old girl. Good old dependable mom. Year after year, we just take her for granted. I should have left when I had my bag packed. Molly, why don't you take the night off? Go to a movie. I know. We'll all go to the movies. The whole family. You too, Alvin. Me too. I'll, I'll put a tie on. Yes, Molly, we'll leave the dishes. There's a swell bill at the bijou. It's one of those horror pictures. Great. It'll scare you to death. On uh, second thought, uh, maybe you folks better go without me. Uh, I've got a letter to write and... No, Henry, we won't go without you. Oh, Pops. I'll tell you what, we'll have an evening at home. I'll get some bright, cheerful music on the radio and then we can play some bridge. The layaway plan. Special this week, our regular $100 funeral for only 75 Ashland Cemetery has a plot just for you. Hey, that reminds me. I heard George Crandall died today. Dropped dead, just like that. Don't do that, you big... I mean, Alvin, old man, please don't snap your fingers. It makes me kind of nervous. Uh, I'm sorry, Henry. Well, it's just a... Here, have a cigar. Thanks. Take them all. I'm giving up smoking. Thanks, Henry. Well, don't bother. I'll get it, Molly. Oh, dear. I'm worried about Henry. Gee, Pop sure has changed. Yeah, well, let's not change him back. Well, well, Mr. Swanee, come in. Thank you. Say, uh, I want to talk to you. Say, uh, yes? about yesterday, uh, I'm sorry I called you a faker. Now, you need to give it another thought, Mr. Elkins. Um, Mr. Swami, uh, this business about talking to people after they're, uh, gone, is that really on the level? Most assuredly. Well, uh, look, um, uh, if I were to... That is, uh, if someone were gone, uh, how would he go about, uh, tuning in on your wavelength? To one who reaches the inner circle of the astral abode, such things are instantly known. They are, huh? Oh, thanks. Oh, um, Nora, look who's here. Our friend, Mr. Swami. My dear Mrs. Elkins, uh, do forgive me for dropping in so informally. Well, on the contrary, this is a delightful surprise. Uh, sit down, sit down. Uh, uh, tell me uh, about this astral business. 
circles, an inner circle. Uh, How long does it take? Mind, Mr. Elphick? May I speak to your wife alone, please? Oh, no. Sure. Uh, I, uh, I have a very important letter to write anyway. Uh, sure. uh, I'll, uh, I'll close the door. Last night, strange and powerful forces manifested themselves. All evening, I felt the vibrations, the spirits seeking to contact me. Oh, how exciting. Later, I had a visitation. A visitation? Yes, Nora. It concerns you and your husband. I knew it. I knew the spirits had something to do with it. You know, Henry's been acting very strange all evening. What's wrong? You know, you say this, Scorpio is in the ascendancy. For good or bad? It depends. My visitor, Brought me a warning. Let me see. Yes, yes, it concerned land. A lot of land. In the east. Henry's hundred acres. Yes, yes, yes. Your husband doesn't dispose of that property immediately. A terrible calamity may befall you. Well, he'll never agree to it. You must try and convince him. I'll remain here and uh, set all of my psychic and telepathic powers to overcome his resistance. You would try. Try. Henry. Hmm? Oh, uh, uh, what did the Swami say? How come he wanted to be alone with you? Henry, now promise me you won't fly off the handle and start shouting. Oh, oh. now what's he been up to? It's, uh, it's about you. Me? Something terrible is going to happen. Did, did he tell you that? Yes. Whatever it is, it's a calamity, and you're not going to like it. You're telling me. Say, that fellow's pretty good. Yes. He says you have to sell that hundred acres. Gosh, he knows everything. Well, that's what I'm doing. You're selling it? Mm-hmm. I'm just writing a letter to National Transit Airways. I'm going to let them have it for an airport, if we can come to terms. Oh, Henry, that's wonderful. I can't tell you how happy you've made me. I guess I should have tried making you happy a long time ago. Why, Henry, I've always been happy with you. Honest. You know, Nora, I may not always show it, but I love you very much. Henry, you haven't told me that in years. <laughs> look, look, why don't you sit down and finish that letter? Yes, you know, I left the swami and they're all alone. <laughs> uh -huh. It's a miracle. I just can't believe it. He's willing to sell. But there wasn't even the slightest argument. Really? You know, it was your psychic concentration that did it. Of course. I exerted every bit of my telepathic power. Oh, it's unbelievable. I just can't wait to tell the girl. I, uh... I hope you told Mr. Elkins uh, to dispose of the property immediately. Well, I didn't have to. You know, he was already writing the letter. He's considering somebody's offer. Yes, yes. Let me concentrate. Yes, I know. National Transit Airways. Amazing. Oh, Swami, you are wonderful. You know so much. <laughs> we girls can't keep anything from you, I guess, huh? <laughs> Nora. Oh, you still here? I, I was just leaving. Oh, don't hurry. Uh, Nora, is there a stamp in the house? I've got one. Oh, never mind, Swami. I've got one right over here. I'll be glad to mail that for you. I'm going right by the post office. Well, thanks. That's very nice of you. Anybody want anything from the drugstore? Janie's buying me an ice cream soda. Oh, yeah, here. Um, save you the trouble. Alvin, drop this off in the mailbox. Oh, sure. Oh, he'll never remember, Pops. I'll take it. Don't forget, we match for a double scoop. Uh, good night, Mr. Elf. Oh, you're going? Yeah. Uh, well, uh, thanks for the information. And you couldn't get your hands on that letter? Yep. Follow them all the way to the drugstore. Now we've got to work fast. If we get to Chicago tomorrow, that means that in three or four days, Harding will be down to close the deal. Well, then I guess that leaves us out in the cold. <laughs> on the contrary. According to my little crystal ball, he's going to have to do business with us instead of Elkins. Well, I, 
I don't follow you. I... Very simple. Last night, I phoned a friend in Chicago. And this morning, Mr. Henry Elkins will receive a wire that NTA is withdrawing its offer. Schwabi, you're a genius. Well, that you're selling the land and you're going to be in the chips. You should double your insurance. You never know when you might die. That's what you think. Oh, Mr. Hunter, yes, come in. Uh, sit down. Oh, just the man I want to see. Alvin. Look, how do you feel about life insurance? Alvin, please. All right, all right. I'll talk to you about it later. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, sit down, Mr. Hunter. Thank you. Now, Mr. Hunter, um, I wanted to speak to you about the Elkins Acres. Sorry, no incinerator. <laughs> no, that's out. The council met last night and voted to keep the old one. Oh. <laughs> I hear a lot of things through the bank, and I've just got a tip that a certain airline is interested in your land. NTA. They've already made me an offer. Oh, didn't lose any time. If I'm not too inquisitive, but how much did they offer? 120,000. Not bad, huh? Not enough. Well, I haven't closed the deal yet. I'm going to lay my cards on the table. With a few improvements on that land, I think they would pay 200,000. 200,000? You're not in a position to put in those improvements, but with my contracting company, I am. Now I'll pay you 125,000. It'll take at least another 25 or so to put it in shape. And I'll take my chances on selling NTA at a reasonable profit. Well, Mr. Hunter, that sounds like a very generous offer. Nothing doing. Our price is 150,000. Alvin, you keep out of this. Don't be a sucker. Henry's making 50,000 next. Now look, uh, hey, that's right. Uh, that's our price, 150,000. I'll tell you what, I'll make it 130,000. 130,000? Let's stop the preliminaries. Make me a real offer. 150,000. 150,000? Now you're talking. Now, wait a minute. Not so fast. Not so fast. Take your time. Take your time. How about a cigar, huh? I... Oh. Oh. Here, they, uh... They keep pressure there. We might even decide to put in the improvements ourselves. You're certainly driving a close bargain. That time's a wasting, Mr. Hunter. 133. They're getting warm. We're not warming up. Okay. 135. Take it or leave it. You get out of here. I beg your pardon. Oh, not you, Mr. Hunter. Sit down. It's Molly. Excuse me a minute, will you? What's the matter with you? Telegram. Who's dead? You are. Oh, I uh, think. Oh, no. Molly. I tell you, Mr. Hunter, a measly 135. Sold! Sold nothing. You heard me, Alvin. I'm taking 135. And I'm not taking a cent less than 150. It's my land. You've got nothing to say about it. Yours and Nora's, and I'm protecting her interests. 150. Alvin, please. Since you can't make up Alvin's mind, I'll be going. Now, wait, Mr. Hunter. Pay no attention to him. He's got no mind. He's only a boy. He's as old as you are. He fell on his head when he was 21. I'll take the 135. I tell you, we're getting stuck. We're getting stuck. Oh, I really thought I was doing you a favor. Do you hear that? The man's doing us a favor. A favor, do you? Un now, Henry, we'll both sign this agreement. And I say don't sign. I say shut up. I'll pay half in cash and half when it goes through escrow. Oh, never mind. Just hurry up and sign it. My, but you're excited. Well, it's, uh, that's bad for you. <laughs> Why, you're liable to go like that. Please, Mr. Hunter, don't do that. Well, now, don't tell me I'm interrupting something. Didn't expect to see you here, William. Well, I'm not surprised to see you. Oh, uh, Roger, we have a little business. Uh, Alvin, be a nice fellow and take him out and sell him some insurance, will you? Thank I knew you. you'd find out about the airport. Airport? What airport? Of course, you've my idea that NTA wants the Elkins track. Well, you're too late. I'm buying it. Well, I've heard a rumor they've uh, changed their mind. Now, you mustn't believe everything you hear, Roger. Uh, how's Nelly these days? You heard no such thing, Roger, or you wouldn't be here. How's Danny? He's a very fine boy, that... Well, 
I'd investigate it first if I were you. You're a smooth manipulator, Roger, but you'll never see the day you'll outsmart me. I'll show you what I think of your rumor. Uh, yeah, Henry. that's fine. Huh? Henry, did you see this? Uh -huh. It's from the... Oh, yes, good old NTA. Increased their offer. Oh, no, they didn't. Uh, Nora, how about some tea and sandwiches? Henry, they withdrew their offer. Let me see that wire. You knew about this, Henry. Why? Well, and you still tried to sell me that land. You'd already made your That offer. doesn't alter the situation. And it was deceit and chicanery of the lowest sort. Did Henry do something wrong? Plenty, Mrs. Elkins. I'm afraid I put my trust in the wrong man. You're nothing but a cheat and a swindler. I tried to warn you, William. You did, and I owe you an apology. Look, Roger, Mr. Hunter. I'm surprised and disappointed in you, Henry. Gentlemen, I want you to know I had nothing to do with this. I'm sorry this had to happen in front of you, Nora. Who would you pay 50,000, Mr. Hunter? 45? 40? Let's go. Well, I was going to sting you for a few minutes. What for? Well, on second thought, you're quite right. Come on, let's go. Good Goodbye, day, Nora. Uh, so you're trying to pull a fast one, huh? I'm ashamed to be your brother-in-law. How could you do a thing like that? I needed the money for you and Janie. I can't tell you why. But you try to swindle Mr. Hunter. Henry, that's stealing. It's not like that. It's, it's business. And now you're even trying to excuse it. He called you a cheat and a swindler, and right in front of Roger Wingate. Oh, dear, now it'll be all over town. How can Janie or I ever face anybody again? But, no. Don't touch me. Now, no. I'll never feel the same toward you again. I just never will. Henry, I'm going to leave you. You can't do that. Oh, yes, I can. I've got to. I've got to do it for Janie's sake. I can't have people pointing at her saying that her father's a common... A common... <laughs> Alvin, Alvin, you haven't read the telegram yet. Oh. Nora. Henry, we've argued for hours. My mind's made up. I told you I'm leaving you. My astral vibrations just don't coincide with yours. They coincide all right with that Swami. Oh, now, for heaven's sake, don't start that over again. Okay, but you and Janie don't have to leave. I will. Here, I've signed everything over to you. You didn't have to do that. Well, it's not much, but... Mm -hmm. Bye, Janie. Bye, Nora. I hope you and the Swami will be very happy. Where you going, Henry? Where you going? The town's going east. 
it, Henry. It's going east. But where are you going? You keep out of this, honey. I will not. That cheat and swindler is my son, and now he's going. Certainly he's going. He's got special gears, full race cam, and high compression head. Going fast. 110. And we haven't even got him into high gear. Going, 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 we're going. You're going, but you're going. You're going. He's disgraced me in front of Mr. Wingate. If he walks in at a family squabble, scare him to death. He isn't going. I'm going. I'm leaving. And this time I mean it. As Justice of the Peace, do you take this widow to be your lawfully wedded airport? I do. No! No! like a bird, too. A pelican. Fred Wood. What happened to the peach cobbler that was in the icebox? That's for him, his favorite. I made it special, just in case. Poor Pops. I wonder where he's eating. What he's eating. He's always so finicky about his food. Oh, mulligan stew. I never knew food could taste this good. Eat first, my friend, and talk later. Remember, le fou fon, le festin, et les sons le monde. What's that? That's French. Mm. Fools give banquets, and the wise men eat them. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> Don't mind the professor, pal. He'll throw them foreign lingos at you all night. Smoke? Oh, mm. no thanks. <laughs> hey, how long you been on the road? Road? Yeah. How long have you been a hobo? Oh! Well, now, let's see, um, four, five, six, yeah. hours. Ah, a neophyte, a newcomer pausing bewildered on the threshold of a new existence. Welcome, friend, to the fraternity. <laughs> well, <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Welcome to the Knights of the Road, and oh, what a glorious life. Not a care in the world. Florida in the winter and Maine in the summer. Sounds like fun. If I only had a pair of pants, I... <laughs> hey, you ought to take care of that cold, pal. Them things can take ten years off your life. In my case, ten days would be a lot. According to the doctor, I've got less than four months. Oh, uh, you shouldn't believe them doctors. A pal of mine had a cold once, and the doctor said he didn't have a thing to worry about. Three days later, we buried. Pneumonia? His wife put poison in his Brussels sprouts. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my friend, I shall cure your illness. To quote from the poet Horace, Nunc est vivendum. Now is the time to drink. French. Latin. <laughs> yes, plan. Ah, gentle companions, there is the universal medicine. There is the vitamin-filled panacea of all ills. Go ahead, pal. If that stuff don't kill your germs, it'll sure paralyze them. <laughs> what is it? Ah, uh, it is the golden nectar of the apple. Oh, cider. Oh, <laughs> cider that turned belligerent. <laughs> <laughs> See? Them germs are complaining already. Yeah, you. No, no. After you. More? Quantum beast. 
as much as you wish. Latin. Latin. just below the bridge. This letter was in the inside pocket. Dearest Nora and Janie, by the time you read this, I'll be gone. He said he might not be around for very long. I didn't know what he meant. I didn't know. Pa. I didn't know either. You were standing right over there. I said to him, where do you think you're going? He said, down to the river. It's just like him. Always thinking of himself. Didn't he know there'd be an anti-suicide clause in his insurance? Now we can't collect a cent. Oh, oh, no. A rest in peace. You know, 36 hours is a lot of shut eye for anyone. We must remember our poor, unfortunate friend imbibed a considerable quantity of uh, vitamins. Now, he's waking up now. Oh, it's... Ooh. Oh, wait, my friend, for morning in the bowl of night has flung the stone that put the stars to flight. I know. That's English. Everyone <laughs> okay, pal? Fine. Ooh, my head. Those apples sure were belligerent. Oh, that was quite a fate some pet we had. That's French for lawn party. Oh. oh. I think I'm dying. Well, don't worry about it now. You still got three months and 26 days to go. Who told you that? Well, you did. Oh, you had a talking, Jack. You told us about your wife and kid and that hunk of land. Now, did I tell you about that Hindu, Swami? Everything. My friend, I have given your case a great deal of consideration, and I'm sure you did what was right. With the inevitable staring you in the face to go back to your family would bring them heartaches and sorrow. That was my final decision. Mm -hmm. <laughs> hey, chum, you ain't cured yet. Oh, Here, oh, oh, have oh. another shot of penicillin. Yeah, quick. Come on, let's sit down. Yeah. Here, right over here. And now, if you'll excuse me, I'll go and have the agreements drawn up. Be brave, dear Nora. Be brave. Oh, I wonder if I'm doing the right thing. I know you are. The mystic voices from the astral abode never speak falsely. I just wish it could be sure. You will be sure. You will have proof of it this evening. I will arrange a private seance at my temple. And there, with your own ears, you will hear him give his approval. You know, you fellas are the best friends a fella I ever had. When I get up to heaven in a few weeks, I'm going to put in a good word for you. Thanks, pal. Well, here I go. Back to good old Elkinsville. Yes, sir. I'm going to sneak right into the house, sneak right into a pair of pants, and sneak right out again. You think you'll remember your way back here? If I'm not back in three hours, send up smoke signals. Mrs. Elton should be back most any time. I see. Well, if you don't mind, I think I'll wait here a few minutes. I'm, I'm awfully sorry about this.
This is terrible. Terrible? You have no idea. It's awful. Who's the deceased? Anybody I know? Henry Oakins. I knew him well. Boys together. Wouldn't have happened to a nicer guy. Was he sick long? He killed himself. He did? Yeah, I fly all the way down here from Chicago to close a very important deal, and this stupid idiot throws himself in the river. He did not. I fell into the river. Listen, I happen to... Well, well Henry Elkins. Shh. A little respect for the departed. What in the world happened to you? It's the golden nectar of belligerent apples. Why, you're... <laughs> Look, please. Now listen, you got to snap out of this. I come down here from Chicago. Wait, 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 please, don't. Who are you? Harding. Harding? Yes, Harding, National Transit Airways. Don't you remember me? Oh, yeah, what are you doing here? Why, I flew down from Chicago to close the deal for your property. Close it? I thought you canceled it. Oh, no. As a matter of fact, we held a meeting and decided to buy the adjoining 60 acres as well. It's not for sale. I've already bought it. Oh. Well, now, in that case, maybe we can negotiate both deals with you. Mr. Elkins National Transit Airways will employ a large personnel, and we're going to need 50 or 60 modern dwellings to house them. Uh, with four exposures. Uh, yes, and uh, we'll use part of the acreage for that. You'll have to call it Elkins Eastern Acres. Well, I... That's fair enough. Look, I'll wire my office, and I should have... Say, what was the idea of you sending me that telegram? Sent you no telegram. Are you sure? Positive. Some fishy going on here. Look, you come back in an hour. I've got some investigating to do. You know, searchy la femme. Latin. things? The whole kit and caboodle of them's over at the Swami's temple. They're holding another seance. I'm supposed to be dead and they're playing games. You'll excuse me. I shall return with that meeting. All set, Lila. How about you, Tony? Speaking system, lighting effects. All set. Good. Don't forget, Elkins' voice is slow and in low register. Don't worry, boss. The speaking system will cover up if I happen to go off a little. Watch for every cue I throw. That goes for both of them. This is no fight on the set. It's big. Let's get on it. Right. Make it good, honey. This is our last show. Then back to New York? Back to New York. And it's tired. Mr. Elkins! Uh, no, 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 don't faint. Where's Janie? Where's Janie? I, 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 I don't know. Come on, get in. But I'll do the driving. Fast. 
Gee, I didn't know it'd go that fast. You stay here. This is a one-man job. Can you come in to us? I feel your presence, Henry. Are you among us? Yes. Give us a manifestation of your presence. Ah. Are you permitted to answer questions? Yes. Hear me carefully, Henry. Nora is disposing of your land, Mr. Whitney. Do you approve, Henry? No! Uh, the vibrations are wrong. There's a disturbing influence in this room. Someone is out of tune. I... I invoke the spirit, Henry. Are you there? You're darn tootin' I am. In the name of Brahma, the creator, these do the preserver. Never mind them. This is Elkins, the destroyer. Sounds almost as if he were in the room. Henry. Henry, darling, are you all right? I'm fine, Nora. Don't you worry. Are you happy? I am now, and getting happier by the minute. Oh, no! oh dear. You caught a cold. Henry, I'll bet you're going without your rubbers and muffler. I don't need them here. It's plenty warm. Henry, where are you? I'm up above. Oh, oh I'm so glad. I I thought maybe... You thought maybe I didn't make it. Oh, no, darling. You're a wonderful man, Henry. You mean I was a wonderful man. Too bad you didn't appreciate me while I was alive. But we did, Pops. We did. No, I was a failure. I was nutty as an angel cake. Fruitcake. Oh, Henry, if only I could see you just once more to tell you how wrong I was. You'd like to see me? Oh, yes. You shall see me. Look up. <laughs> Gee, it's like television. Only clear. You silly people. You ask for a spook, but the minute one shows up, you start screaming. That's a real one. I'm getting out of here. Sit down, you swami salami. Take a peek in your crystal ball and see how you're going to look behind iron bars. Your crimes have caught up with you, you chiseler. You too, Mr. Wingate. Roger, are you going to let him talk to you like that? You pipe down, you old halibut. Well, now, look, look, Henry. We've been friends for a long time. Too long. Nora, whatever you do, don't sell him that land. Henry, I've already signed the agreement. So, Roger Wingate, you thought you could take advantage of a defenseless widow. What's the matter, Roger? You're squirming. You're nervous and frightened. I see everything you do, Roger, and I know everything. I know all about that fake telegram, and it's all written down in a little black book. And your name is on the front cover. <laughs> He's right. He's right. He's right. Here's, here's, here's the agreement, Nora. I, I'm canceling it. Come, Nellie. I'm, I'm not well. Uh, good night, Henry. Good night, Roger. And from now on, watch your step, Roger. You never can tell when I might drop in on you. Oh, oh no! Oh, Henry! The oh. flesh. Oh, Henry! Oh, 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 oh. Oh, you're alive! You bet I'm alive. Oh. Molly, Alvin. What happened to that one me? He just passed me like a flock of spooks, rat. <laughs> Henry, old man, I knew you wouldn't do me out of my commission. Here it is. It came this afternoon. Oh, My insurance policy. You mean they passed me? I'm all right? I'm not going to die? The doc says you're a class A risk. Oh. 
Oh, oh, oh. oh, that's great. <laughs> oh, but you're great. Everything's great. I'm okay. Elkins Eastern Acres is okay. Isn't it wonderful? Yes. Wonderful. Did you hear that? <laughs> I'll bet father and grandfather are so happy they're turning over in their graves. 